Okay, welcome to the first revision video um, regarding energy and we're looking at energy concepts in this particular um, chapter. Um, it's on page 365 and 366 of the textbook. And what we're going to look at now is um, this idea of energy, work and power. And that will take us on to energy systems and a number of other areas. Um, but really to begin with we just need to get an idea of really where energy begins and uh, where it ends. So basically, what are we looking at? Well we need to look at um, three different forms of energy for the syllabus and really from a you know, basic point of view we need to understand that all energy starts from light and uh, starts from the sun, our solar energy. And that uh, that energy, plants are able to convert that light energy into chemical energy. Now when we look at the definition for chemical energy, simply energy stored within the bonds of chemical compounds within molecules. Now when we eat plants, or we even when we eat the animals that are obviously eaten the plants, our body will store that energy as carbohydrates or fats or proteins and these are obviously chemical compounds made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen bonds and it's those bonds um, that store the energy and it's that energy that we're going to use in the end from our point of view uh, in terms of muscle contraction. Now we store this energy um, as something called adenosine triphosphate we'll get to know it better as ATP now adenosine triphosphate, the chemical energy stored is a high energy compound in the body and from our point of view it's the most immediate and most usable source of energy in the human body and it looks in terms of a bit of chemistry it looks like this and um, it's got adenosine joined to three simple phosphate um, molecules with three bonds and it's these bonds that are going to be um, very important when we go into the energy systems, particularly this last bond here. Now the energy stored in the ATP and uh, we will call potential energy, stored energy which is ready to be used when required and again from our point of view this is used when our muscles contract, when we throw a javelin, when we sprint, when we move, anything like that at all it's this potential energy that we're going to tap into within the ATP. So we continue our work in our flow diagram then our stored chemical energy, this potential energy within the muscles. Now then, when we eventually do contract and we do actually break this energy down, we're going to get something called kinetic energy. And a simple way of remembering that for some way of remembering kinetic energy is that it's the energy in the form of muscle contraction, it's movement energy. Potential energy is that stored energy, kinetic energy is the movement energy, something has actually happened, a muscle contraction, a joint movement, anything along those lines. Now look at the breaking of the bonds, or one of the bonds in the ATP in more detail when we do our work on energy systems. But very basically, and I'm just moving all of this out of the way, if we look at this flow diagram here, we get a very simple overview. And the bond that we're really interested in is this one here. This is the bond, this last bond that we're going to break. And it's this, the breaking of this bond, which gives us, takes us from ATP, so adenosine triphosphate, three phosphate uh, molecules, to something called adenosine diphosphate, two phosphate molecules, and then one inorganic phosphate now on its own. When the phosphate um, molecule is on its own, we call it an inorganic phosphate. Notice that the bond has gone now and energy has been released. It's an exothermic uh, reaction and it's this energy that we will use um, to, to power our muscle contractions. That kinetic energy uh, has been created from the potential energy that was actually stored within the bonds itself. Now I'd like to think of the body as being fairly efficient. Uh, but when we look at the following term, the body's maximum efficiency of converting food into motion is actually only about 27%. Um, so really from our point of view, it's not very efficient at all at converting this chemical energy into kinetic energy. So it's worth noting that actually most of the energy is converted into heat. 
and that explains why our temperature goes up during exercise and realize that the human body is actually not that efficient at converting the chemical energy into kinetic energy. When we look at our flow diagram once again, just moving all of this, going right back to our flow diagram, yeah, the kinetic energy obviously creates this movement and the heat energy, sweating, increase in temperature, that's where um, most of the rest of the um, the energy, the kinetic energy goes. So yeah, in terms of efficiency we're not the greatest, but from our point of view, in terms of from the start, the sun, solar energy converted um, by plants into chemical energy. We then, either by the eating of the plants or the animals that eat the plants themselves, convert that into carbohydrates, fats and proteins. Store that in the muscles um, in the form of ATP, our adenosine triphosphate, and the breaking of that uh, adenosine triphosphate bonds gives us our movement. And again, from our point of view, in terms of the syllabus, that's the most important bit. In the next video, we're going to look at definitions um, for energy work and power.